away to cap this first night of the college basketball season. Ron Gruber, Doug Shouse, Jeff Clark are our officials. Kentucky and White, Duke and Blue, and we're ready for the tip of our Sonic Blockbuster. Ashton Hagen's at the point for Kentucky, one of the freshmen we've been talking about. Duke starts off in man-to-man. -man. You'll remember last year, Duke was mostly a zone basketball team, but this year they have length and athleticism. Heldon Johnson, one of three freshmen in the starting lineup for Kentucky, misses the shot, and now an early foul on Hagens, who has a reputation as being a tenacious on-ball defender. Well, he's a point guard, Ashton Hagens, from Cartersville, Georgia, and he can really get into the paint, but he also puts great pressure on the ball. Just about took that ball away from Cam Reddish. He is alert and very disruptive defensively. There will be some fascinating matchups to track as we look at how each coach lines up his defense against the other team. And right now, P.J. Washington draws the assignment of Zion Williamson. Keldon Johnson's on R.J. Barrett. The two most important matchups of this ballgame. Trey Jones, younger brother of Tyus, most outstanding player for Duke in the 2015 Final Four, knocks down a three. And hitting standstill threes is going to be an important factor for Duke this year because so much attention will go to R.J. Barrett and Zion Williamson that other players are going to get standstill threes. Straight line drive by Johnson, who is always in attack mode. Well, he is a very competitive player, and he's got the toughest matchup against R.J. Barrett. Wow. No conscience for Cam Reddish. Welcome to college basketball, young man. Boy, Reddish can really shoot the ball. Very, very skilled. Did not play in Canada on Duke's tour over there in August but he can really stroke it. Same with Trey Jones. Both of them were recovering from injuries at the time. Hagens up with a three. And a rebound in traffic by Barrett. He can do this as well. He's very comfortable bringing the ball up the court. The lefty tries to finish and does. Boy, and finished over Keldon Johnson with some body contact. And that's what R.J. Barrett does best. He gets to the rim, gets a rebound, and can rip and take it himself. Duke getting out and scoring early in transition, but you can see Barrett goes right in the body of Keldon Johnson, still able to finish off the glass, coming down after the body contact. He shoots that ball just about as he's uh, hitting the ground, really well defended by Keldon Johnson. That's just better offense than it was defense. Barrett, the consensus National High School Player of the Year a year ago. Wide open, Hagens passed up the three, switches hands and banks it home, wow. Boy, what a beautiful shot fake, and how about that left-handed finish? There you can see we're 12 points in, and they have all been scored by freshmen. Seven of the ten players in the game right now are in their first year of college basketball. Zion Williamson for three. Not just a dunker, folks. Boy, if he consistently hits that shot, forget it. How do you guard him? This is an incredibly skilled team. Great shot fake. Tyler Hero misses the three, and look at Williamson get up for the rebound. Then he threw it out of bounds. Now Zion Williamson, another left-hander in addition to R.J. Barrett, gets a little bit of space. P.J. Washington had his hand down trying to take away the drive, and Williamson, just with a standstill jumper, buried it with a great follow-through. Seven-point lead in the early going for the Blue Devils. Cam Reddish on Tyler Hero. That length can bother Hero's shot. Hero is the best shooter in this game. The question is, can he get open shots? He led Kentucky into both scoring and three-point percentage on their tour to the Bahamas. Oh. Keldon Johnson with a high-arcing lay-in. What a beautiful drive. And right now, Kentucky is getting into the lane. 17 points scored, all by freshmen. UCLA cut, ball screen, and throwback. Barrett for three. And a loose ball down to Hero. Nice look ahead to Johnson. Count it. Long two, though, for Johnson. Had a foot on the line. These freshmen look nervous, don't they? <laughs> yeah. They look really nervous. Yeah. We'll take that out in the rear. Don't worry about it. Barrett can't get it to stay down. Here comes Kentucky. Hagens 
And it's knocked out of bounds by Williamson, but we got a foul. Got a foul against Duke. Keldon Johnson is a sophomore, or is a freshman from South Hill, Virginia, and is a two-way player. Really competes. He's been compared with his motor to Michael Kidd Gilchrist. That's how hard he plays. He's aggressive, he gets downhill, and he can attack you on both ends of the floor. And he's going to be a real difference maker in this game. Early subs for both coaches. Zion Williamson and Marquise Bold into the bench. Javin Delorier, Jack White in for Duke. And for Kentucky, Nick Richards has come into the game. One of the sophomores. Hero. Around and out. And Delorier, who had a great summer and really could be starting. But figures to be the first big off the bench most nights. Red is just stepping into a three with all kinds of confidence. Well, Mike Krzyzewski has been talking to Cam Reddish about being more aggressive and being assertive. Early on after coming back from injury, he didn't play in Canada. Trying to feel his way around a little bit, especially in the first exhibition. But anytime he gets an open shot, he needs to pull the trigger. And a foul against Kentucky. When we come back, we will try to compare Zion Williamson to others, as you'll see. Kind of tough to do, but it's fun. Like a Mack truck, maybe? <laughs> ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800-STATE-FARM. And Dollar General. Save time, save money every day. Zion Williamson, as we told you, 6'7", 285. Really, as Jay said, kind of unlike any other player he's ever seen, given his skill set and his size. But we'll have some fun here and try to compare him to some other people. There's only one current player in the NBA who weighs more than Zion Williamson. Boban Marjanovic at 290 pounds, but he's 7'3". Williamson's basically about the size of the average offensive lineman on Duke's football team. And Aaron Judge, who's the biggest baseball player ever, well, he and Zion Williamson are about the same size. It's just, and as you said, like a 45-inch vertical leap for a guy who's 285 pounds. How does that happen? It, it's a it's a freakish combination and freakish in a in a great way that I've never seen anybody like him on a basketball floor. That 45-inch vertical, he uses it all the time. Incredibly explosive. And at 285, I mean, we'll have to get John Brinkus and sports science on the, the force it takes to get that high in the air with 285 but he's also got nimble and agile feet he's got like the feet of a dancer with that kind of that kind of frame it's really it's hard to wrap your head around watching him play 14 8 Duke up six early quad a green into the game and now for Kentucky reddish has hit a couple of threes now he's trying to post up a smaller defender and he misses the turnaround as Emmanuel quickly took a shot right to the jaw defending that post move. Yeah, Reddish trying to take advantage of what was a size mismatch but quickly did a very good job of just staying in front of him and making him take a tough turnaround jumper. There's definitely some sort of a play on words joke coming tonight on Quickly's name and I'm afraid it'll be you rather than me. Let's bring in Laura. Well, Dan, Coach Cal in the Kentucky huddle saying defensively in transition, we've got to hit him sooner so that we can at least contest the threes, so we shouldn't be giving up uncontested threes. And then offensively, he likes the drives, but he also wants to get them inside a little more. He said they're settling for too many threes. Get it to Reed Travis inside. He said he was open a couple times and we missed him. It is expected to be a better than typical three-point shooting team for John Calipari, but do you feel, Jay, that ultimately their offensive strength will be pounding the ball inside? It's one of their strengths. I think they have a number of strengths. They still have to drive the ball and get the ball into the paint, but because they have Reed Travis, they can post up P.J. Washington, Nick Richards, but this is, that's what they have to do is what Nick Richards just did there. That's protect the rim, block shots, chain shots. Yep. Johnson misses the three. And we get a foul on the floor going against Delorier. And that'll be a, a quick second foul on Javin Delorier. And that's going to force him back to the bench. And that was a good sequence for Nick Richards. 
he did a very good job on the defensive end of changing a shot and protecting the rim. He ran the floor and then went hard after an offensive rebound and picked up that second foul on DeLaurier. That's the kind of thing that doesn't show up in a box score, but those were two big plays by Nick Richards. Johnson out, Hero back in for the Wildcats. With this kind of intensity and pace and with the relative depth that both coaches feel they have, we're going to see a lot of substitutions tonight. And there's Williamson with another rebound, and now he's bringing it up the floor. Bounce pass to Jones for the lay-in. How about that mile. pass? Zion Williamson gets the rebound and then rips in a fast break. Who's going to get in front of him? And throws a beautiful bounce pass to his point guard, Trey Jones. Wow. Now R.J. Barrett bringing it up the floor behind the back. Bolden, oh, oh finding some space. Marquise Bolden is a different player than he was this summer. In 39 minutes of play in Canada, Marquise Bolden did not score a point and really was a very little impact. And since coming back and since regular season practice has started, he's been a totally different and effective player. That's a terrific move and great concentration. See how he kept his head up the entire time and his eyes on the rim? You know, this is a, a former McDonald's All-American, a guy who has battled injuries intermittently in his two years in Duke. And really, had it not been for an injury to Javin Delorier a few weeks ago, Bolden might not have gotten a chance to wind up in the starting lineup again, but he seems intent on making the most of it. Washington, no. And over the back for a foul, Nick Richards. Kentucky is getting opportunities. They're down 10, but Kentucky is getting opportunities. They are not finishing plays. They've taken the first available shot instead of working it a little bit more. And maybe they need to calm down on the offensive end a little bit. Interested observer, Yudoka Azubuki of Kansas. Victorious over Michigan State. Big guy, had a really good game other than some late missed free throws. And he's checking out Duke and Kentucky. At 17 points, four block shots against Michigan State. Jack White misses the corner three. Weak side rebound. Bounce pass. And it's finally Kentucky ball. Boy, Kentucky fortunate there. Got beat to a loose ball. Could have cost him a bucket. And now a turnover. Barrett and Williamson in transition. Barrett! That is where the Blue Devils may be at their most lethal this year, is when they can get out and run. A 9-0 run by Duke. And in transition, this team can be absolutely devastating. If R.J. Barrett decides to throw it to his right, Zion Williamson can get a Sports Center top 10. Instead, he keeps it, and he gets one. On the ESPN app. Boy, Arkansas has a great player in Daniel Gafford. Could very well wind up being the SEC Player of the Year. E.J. Montgomery is checked in for Kentucky. Another one of their freshmen is Hero drives and it gets fouled. Tyler Heroes from Wisconsin and originally committed to the Badgers. And he can really shoot the ball. Whether it's mid-range, deep, he's got size and just a, a magnificent shooting stroke. 33 points per game last year. Richards out and Travis back in for Kentucky. How important is Travis on a team that other than him is entirely comprised of freshmen and sophomores. I think having his presence being a senior actually a graduate but for for him who had his best games last year get head to head against DeAndre Ayton uh, of Arizona the number one pick in the NBA draft last June uh, Reed Travis brings a steadiness. I mean he's going to produce every single game. Right now, he's surrounded by four freshmen. That is a lot of youth on the floor. Look at the bounce on Williamson. I mean, there's just nothing that E.J. Montgomery could do right there. And again, and I know we've said it before, this kid's got 1.8 million followers on Instagram, largely because of dunks. It's a disservice to his talent to call him a dunker. No, he's a player. He's unbelievable. And the only thing that, that he doesn't do well yet is consistently shoot the ball from the perimeter. 
but everything else, I mean, his feet are unbelievable. Like the quickness and explosiveness of that first step to get by E.J. Montgomery, who is a, a, an outstanding athlete himself. And the lead is up to 13. And one thing that Trey Jones does extraordinarily well is he puts discipline pressure on the basketball. He tried to step in front and get a steal on Ashton Hagens there, gets a, a foul, but that pressure on the ball gets Hagens thinking more about Jones than he is thinking about running the Kentucky offense. And that's what a, a great disruptive on-ball defender can do at the point of attack. A lot of these freshmen, of course, they know each other. They have played against each other, whether it's in all-star games, the AAU circuit, that sort of thing. A lot of familiarity among the two groups. The Duke group of four, they started a text chat before they started committing. Jones was the first one to commit. And they all became friends even before they all were officially Blue Devils. Numbers. And Jack White will tip home the miss. The junior from Australia makes it a 15-point game. Boy, that play was really made by Marquise Bolden and how he guarded that ball screen about the free throw line or top of the key when Kentucky ran it against Duke. His movement of his feet, his alertness, that was a huge play by Marquise Bolden. Right, take a look at this ball screen action here and watch Marquise Bolden and how he comes out and stops the ball. He gets wide, moves his feet, and then a good closeout by Zion Williamson to put late pressure on the shot, and they're able to take the ball and go the other way and wind up getting a deuce out of it but because of the ball screen defense by Marquise Bolden who can really move his feet that's what led to that score on the other end Keldon Johnson misses the front end of the one and one and nothing going right for Kentucky right now well, Kentucky's gonna have to get some stops in addition to some scores but right now Duke's getting just about whatever they want good switch Hero on Barrett. Barrett behind the back. With his off hand, it'll go. He just has a knack for getting to the rim and scoring. The Admiral likes it. All Blue Devils here in the early going in Indianapolis. The freshmen are living up to the hype so far. Well, these two programs, as much as anything else, have been known for their outstanding recruiting classes. Let's say going back to 2010, Kentucky number one in just about every category, and Duke number two in just about every category, including first-round picks, lottery picks, and so on, as obviously these two coaches just keep putting player after player into the NBA. It's amazing. Over the last six years, Duke has had 11 top three recruits. They've had 14 top ten recruits. Over that same period, Kentucky's had 13 top 10 recruits, and Duke has had four number one classes in the last five years. The number two class of all those years has been Kentucky, and the one year Duke wasn't the number one, Kentucky was. <laughs> and according to the mock draft on ESPN.com right now, five of the top seven picks in next year's NBA draft playing here tonight. Duke right now can switch everything one to four, and they've really disrupted this Kentucky offense. Jack White and Zion Williamson slamming it home. Get used to that. If he doesn't break a backboard this year, it'll be a miracle. He ought to wear a mouth guard because he might hit his head on the rim. And he'll get a breather. They just, just don't make him like that. No. They just don't make him like him very often. And again, 285 pounds with a 45 inch vertical. Right now, Keldon Johnson has really been the early offense for Kentucky. The Wildcats haven't been able to get anything. Meanwhile, Duke scoring almost at will. I mean, they've got 
almost 30 points, and we're not even to the midway point of the first half. Good save by White. That's the kind of player he is. Who He'll make all the little plays like he did on the steal before that led to the Williamson dunk. White is another guy, Mike Krzyzewski says, had a great summer. They're looking for him to have a bigger role this year than he did last year. And 2-3 zone right now by Kentucky just to see keep Duke out of the lane, make him shoot it over the top. Which R.J. Barrett did. Boy, if Duke shoots it like this, forget it. And how do you guard him? Kentucky struggling just to make passes and get a decent look. Nice drive there, as you said, by Keldon Johnson, who remains most of the offense. Well, if they're strong with the ball, Kentucky's going to be able to score points. The question is, can they get some stops? Barrett. Oh. Are you kidding? You know, they are so different, Barrett and Williamson, and each really extraordinary in their own way. Quade Green misses the three and down with the rebound to Laurier. And with these longer shots, it means longer rebounds, and that has taken Reed Travis out of getting stick backs and even P.J. Washington. And Duke's been able to clean those up and go the other way. Bolden, left hand, too strong. And now Kentucky with a rare opportunity to run. It'll be Hagens pushing it, but he puts the brakes on. Well, he pushed it. He didn't have anybody running ahead of him. Johnson, nice kick. And the corner three will rattle home for P.J. Washington. P.J. Washington has really improved his body from last year to this and has extended his range more consistent as a shooter. And having to play at times, he can play the three right now for Kentucky. The question is, can he play it effectively on the defensive end? Good ball pressure by Higgins on Barrett. Trey Jones and the rebound down to Travis and if you're Kentucky you can't get it back all at once just want to chip away bit by bit Johnson can't get the rebound over the back of White well, some good minutes off the bench for White Barrett stepping oh. through everything but the finish when well, Kentucky was right there and Barrett just went through everybody couldn't finish one on three is now we've got a reach in foul I believe on DeLaurier, and if it's on him, it's his third. And he came into the game because Zion Williamson went to the bench with some foul trouble. When Kentucky gets a rebound, when they get a, a loose ball, whatever it is, they got to run. Ashton Hagens has been pushing the ball up the court when he's been in there, but nobody's running ahead of him. And it's been sort of a slow break that Duke's been able to get back and keep Kentucky from getting to the rim. Keldon Johnson, now Keldon Johnson. So Williamson and Delorier both on the bench with a bit of foul trouble right now. Bolden will sit down as well. And Antonio Frankovich has taken his place. Alex O'Connell has also checked in for the first time for the Blue Devils. When you and I did the games up in Canada, the two in the Toronto area, one in the Montreal, O'Connell barely played, suffered a fractured orbital bone in the first game. And as you mentioned, no Reddish, no Jones recovering from injuries. So we saw still a very good team, but not nearly the depth and the firepower that they obviously have when the whole group is together. No, no. I mean, it's a different, different group now. So much more powerful and explosive and versatile and deep. Duke's not quite as deep as Kentucky, but they can play eight guys effectively. Kentucky they're back, they're back to man to man. And the two fan bases going at it in the stands right now. Kentucky fans outnumbering Duke fans here in Indy. Reddish will take it from deep. And Brankovich over the back. Good job by Travis to hold them off. Tomorrow, it's an NBA doubleheader on ESPN. And how about this? The first game will come from right here. Bankers Life Fieldhouse in Indianapolis as the Pacers host the Philadelphia 76ers. Then it's the T-Wolves against LeBron and the Lakers in the second game. Coverage begins with NBA Countdown at 7 o'clock on ESPN. And a happy coincidence for Joel Embiid, who got a chance to watch his Jayhawks beat Michigan State. Sticks around, plays in an NBA game tomorrow here against the Pacers. What a player Joel Embiid is. 
And he's fun, too. Yes, he is. He told Laura Rutledge in the first game, wanted to stick around and see Zion Williamson in person, see what all the hype was about. Think he's seen it so far? <laughs> Got a switch. Barrett over Travis. And the foul's going to go on Washington of Kentucky. Well, P.J. Washington, I know he doesn't like the call. He, there was a little discard there, and I know for any big guy, they would look at mostly little guy officials and say, come on, man, this is rebounding. But there was a little discard. So Nick Richards will come back in. Kentucky fans are up in arms right now. And the officials are going to the monitor. We're trying to find out exactly what they're looking at right now. I don't know if somebody got an elbow or a forearm up or I mean, you don't go to the monitor obviously just to look at a, a common foul on a rebounding attempt. We'll get word to you as soon as we find out. It looked like there was a discard with the left arm of P.J. Washington into Antonio Brankovic. As we, you know, they're, they're, the, the officials are always going to look to see, hey, was there, a, was there an elbow to the head? They're, they're always going to try to protect the player's head. A little shove with the left arm down in the midsection, but I don't think that's... See, that, that's where they call... This, this is what they call hook and hold. So that's what they're looking for. They're looking to see, was, was, he, was Rankovic pushed or was he hooking on to P.J. Washington? So that's what they're trying. And if this happens, Washington has to keep the foul, and they could call a hook, which would be a, a, a maybe even a flagrant one on Brankovich. That, that's how this would go on a hook and hold. So you think they're looking? I think they're looking at the hook and hold. Not at the left, not at the forearm of Washington. No, I think they're looking at was he, did Brankovich hook on? Because that, that's an emphasis here, what they call the hook and hold. And it looks like they're just going to, they're not coming over to saying, it looks like they're just going to keep the common foul. And I'm not sure, honestly, I'm not sure there's much of a foul at all. It's just rebounding. Whatever the explanation is, it doesn't seem to have pleased John Calipari, obviously, as Rankovich heads to the line. Because when you talk about these hook and holes, look, this is a tough, this is a tough thing to officiate. Which one was the hook? The guy who, who was hooking from below or the guy who was hooking from above? I mean, it's two big bodies trying to get position and go after the ball. And, you know, what, when, you, when you really think about it, what would, what would everybody said if it was a no call? Right. Probably nothing. No, it's because two big guys going after a rebound. But, but the officials have been told this is what they want to have eliminated from the game. Yeah. So re they don't really have a choice. It's not the officials' fault. It's sort of the rules' fault and, and the rules' committee. If you want to blame blame anybody, blame the rules' committee. Brankovic, the senior from Zagreb, Croatia, knocks them both down and extends the lead to 17. Boy, Duke scores so easily. Quade Green really playing off the ball more this year with Hagenson quickly. Beautiful pass inside and a chance for three for Travis. Reed Travis gets two feet in the paint. And when he does, it is game over. Here he is right here. And when Antonio Brankovic kind of loses a little bit of sight of the ball and he allows Travis to get underneath him. You let him catch it there. It is over. I mean, that is just too much strength. The contact kept his head up and finished off the glass. You're talking about a guy with 1,400 points, 700 rebounds in his Stanford career, two-time first team, all Pac-12, and decides to come to Lexington as a grad transfer. 1,400 points and 1,400 on his SAT. <laughs> That's a pretty good combination. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's a well-rounded young man right there, isn't it? <laughs> and now Big Blue Nation starting to ratchet up the noise a little. Or a lot. Bade Green on R.J. Barrett. Ooh, and a tough call there on Kelvin Johnson. Called for the block of the drive by Cam Reddish to take us to the under-8 media timeout. 
Well, the freshmen are certainly making their presence felt, like Zion Williamson arriving, rising way above the rim. And how about the old man, relatively speaking? Reed Travis for the answer for UK. Hey, Darryl. As head coach of the U.S. national men's team, part of the fifth night presentation of ESPN Basketball, a love story. It premieres next Tuesday, November the 13th at 8 p.m. on ESPN. It's an unprecedented 20-hour film that consists of more than 60 short stories. Mike Krzyzewski with three gold medals in the Olympics, three gold medals in the World Championships, and now no longer the head coach of the national men's team. He has stepped aside. Greg Popovich is doing that now, so... You know, that more time allotted to Duke than he was able to do when he was juggling both jobs. And also, you know, he's had a number of, of health issues in the last few years. He's had a couple of surgical procedures, but he appears to be in great health and in great spirits heading into this season. Yeah, he's moving around better than I've seen in years. And really, he's kind of like a he's kind of like an airplane. You know, all his parts are of different different right. ages. They're, they've all been replaced. <laughs> So the the airplane body may be uh, may be old, but all the different parts have been replaced. He's a bionic man, right? Hero and Reddish sticking close to him because of that shooting ability. Kentucky needs a little more movement. Quickly looks off the defender and then draws the foul. And Emmanuel quickly able to get past his initial defender when that ball screen came. The little fake and. Alex O'Connell tried to step in just a little bit late at his heel. It looked like on the charge circle. But Kentucky's not getting a lot of movement, so he was basically driving against a set defense. And right now, you know, Duke is shooting over 50% from the field. They're 5 of 8 from 3. And Kentucky, just 7 of 19 from the field, 1 of 7 from 3. Knocks them both down. They have toughened up at the defensive end, too. The score's not coming as easily recently for Duke. Yeah, they haven't gotten out in transition quite as much of late. Reddish, no. O'Connell, long rebound, forced it up. And it'll be Kentucky ball. Move the ball, says Coach K. Well, one of the things, because they're running this five-out motion, one of the things that this team is going to learn is who's in addition to who they're guarding on the defensive end who's guarding them and on that last possession R.J. Barrett was being guarded by Ashton Hagens who's an excellent defender but he's not as big as Barrett and find the matchup you like and go to it good job by Jack White of making Harold catch it way beyond where he wanted to Travis has to give it up Hagens baseline needs some help Johnson with a floater but what a player he is and is going to be. And Keldon Johnson is the best pro prospect on this team. Hagens, the foul for Kentucky, is Zion Williamson, who was on the bench with a couple of fouls, gets ready to come back in. Well, I know Ashton Hagens probably thought he got pushed from behind. He tried to shoot the gap, and there was a little bit of body contact. I think he thought, hey, man, I got fouled. I, I was the one that was in front toward the ball, and I got pushed from behind. How is that my foul? And he's right. He's got he pace. got fouled. Yeah, yeah. It's just the official was on the on the flip side of it and, and couldn't really see it, honestly. John Calipari's vantage point from the Kentucky bench. One and one, and Reddish knocks it down. So Hagens goes to the bench, and Williamson will check back in for Reddish. At the first opportunity, which will be right now if he makes the free throw. Well, Cam Reddish has got a beautiful stroke. Yeah, when he was getting recruited, Coach K called Cam Reddish from the locker room after Duke won the 2015 NCAA championship. Wow. That's got to be pretty powerful uh, uh, as a recruit when the yeah, coach who just wins the thing calls you right after. <laughs> and says something like, would you like to be a part of something like this in a couple of years? Quickly too strong. White with another rebound for Duke. Well, he's done a nice job sticking his nose in there and rebounding on the defensive end. He's got five. Barrett, every Kentucky fan is making the traveling signal with their arms, but no call, and he gets the bucket. He's just so good at getting to the basket. 
And that was a little bit of a, a slow play to the rim, almost like a Euro step. I don't think that's his true hair color there, by the way. <laughs> One, two. No, yeah, that yeah. wouldn't have walked. It was yeah. just kind of a slow play. Well, maybe it was a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> game high 13 for Baird and a 16 point lead for Duke, and now it's going against Kentucky. That's another point of emphasis is screening. And Nick Richards was not set and made contact with Jack White. He just he wasn't set. And in slow motion, it doesn't really look like much, but you're going to see a lot of these foul calls until screening gets cleaned up a little bit. There was a lot of complaining by the coaches that, hey, freedom of movement, how are we supposed to guard when there are le illegal screens? And the rules committee sort of bit on that, and it's a point of emphasis. Williamson. Bolden gets it. Barrett for three. Yes. Well, the difference in that play is Duke grabbed the ball, and Kentucky didn't. That's all that was. That ball was available to be grabbed by white shirts and the blue shirts grabbed it and it led to a kick out three which is the, the hardest three to defend. Well we've talked about these four freshmen for Duke. They've combined for 39 of Duke's 45 points led by R.J. Barrett with 16. Well, R.J. Barrett in the five exhibition games Duke has played since August is averaging just a hair under 30 points per game. He is magnificent in transition. A lefty that can get to the rim with craftiness and skill. And he is knocking down perimeter shots in this one. But Duke is well on their way not only to 50 points in this first half. They could get 60 if they keep playing at this level. Right now they are quicker to the ball. They have been more together on the defensive end. Kentucky has to feel a little bit shell-shocked right now. Some offensive stats. Duke's got eight assists and only one turnover in better than 14 minutes of play. They're shooting 50% from the field, and they're 6 for 10 from three-point range. Hard to beat. You know what? There is a long way to go yep. in this one. Montgomery back in for Kentucky. Travis over Bolden, and he'll go to the free throw line. Just a little, got the ball to the high post, and then Keldon Johnson cut right off of Reed Travis down low, and he ducked in. And the only way to really stop that is to get really good pressure on the ball to discourage that pass. Because it's awfully difficult after that cut by Keldon Johnson to keep a guy as big and strong as Reed Travis is from getting position in the lane. Travis knocks down the first, a big deficit here for the Wildcats. Duke came out of the gates fast and furious right at the start. And have had this easily into double figures for most of the first half. Really, Duke has done a great job in transition of getting quick scores. And they've taken Kentucky out of transition. They've made Kentucky a half court team. Still lots of time on the shot clock, 15, back into the hands of Jones. Barrett's got green on him, a much smaller defender. Can they get him the ball in the post? Or they can do that. Williamson will drive and lay it in with his offhand. Either one. Yeah. Yeah. Get him in the post yeah. or let Zion do what he does. Yeah, that's a good play right there. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's extraordinary how he can drive and finish with both hands and go left, go right. Again, for a guy his size. So the mismatch was on R.J. Barrett with Quade Green on him low. But it was also another mismatch with Reed Travis trying to guard out on the perimeter. He's a post player, usually guarding down in the low post, banging with another big guy. Now all of a sudden he's got to guard a guy who's 6'7", 285, who is super explosive. And as Mike Krzyzewski reminded us at shoot-around this morning, as recently as ninth grade, Zion Williamson was primarily a point guard. And there are times when Trey Jones comes out It'll be Baird, it'll be Reddish, or it could be Zion Williamson really initiating the offense for Duke when Jones is on the bench. I mean, Zion Williams is one of those guys where people say, what position does he play? And the answer is anything he wants. Right. 
And Coach K, a big fan of positionless basketball with this group. One of the stories you and I saw Duke up in Canada, and we interviewed Zion Williamson before the first game, and he walked into the room, and you were there, and I asked him, I said, is it Zion or is it Zion? And he said, well, it's Zion, but I like when the when the basketball announcer, and I'm still not clear on who or what the basketball, I like when the basketball announcer says Zion. It sounds cooler, so I'd like it to be Zion. Yeah, I think he meant the PA announcer yeah. when his name's announced <laughs> in the starting lineup. But, you know, being the, uh, the smart guy that I am, whatever he wanted, he's getting it. So he's right. getting Zion. Laurier in Bolden to the bench. One of two. One of the things for Kentucky with this team, they've got a they've got nine guys that are pretty equal. What a pass. And a finish by Travis. Right, just a little middle ball screen and a terrific roll to the basket by Reed Travis. But that was a beautiful pocket pass by Quade Green. Barrett for three. And another rebound by Jack White. Well, he has been impactful as a role player off the bench. Williamson, foot yes. on the line. It's a long two, and they're at the 50 mark with four minutes to go in the half. What do you do? I mean, you're trying to take away a powerful drive to the rim. He just pulls up and knocks down a comfortable jumper. And that's not even his strength. That's what you want him to do. Here comes a double. But a green for three won't go and Williamson the rebound look at this pass the Laurier it's a travel wave it off 17 point lead big brother Tyus Jones with Laura Rutledge when we come back if we swim. with his brother and then future now current Blue Devil Trey Jones Tyus Jones is with Laura Rutherford. All right, thank you, Dan. And Tyus, the fact that you're here is pretty amazing because you are with the Timberwolves and you're going to play the Lakers tomorrow, but your boy Jimmy Butler loaned you the plane to get here to see your brother. What can you say about Jimmy's gesture? Uh, that's my guy. That's my guy. Uh, very selfless. And uh, he's actually supposed to be here. Something came up, uh, but he told me to go anyways. And um, So, yeah, nice of him. And just so everyone knows, he'll be back in plenty of time. He's leaving right after the game. He'll be back to L.A. in time to play that game. Now, when you watch your brother in this Duke team so far, what comes to mind about their dominance performance? Um, they're very talented, um, and they're playing together. I think that's the main thing. Uh, they're getting out on the break, using their athleticism um, and their speed to their advantage. Um, and if they stay together, the sky's the limit for them. It was obviously important for you to be here for Trey's first game in a Duke uniform. What advice did you give him before the game? Um, I know he's got a lot of emotion, but just be yourself. Be yourself. That's, what, that's what's gotten you this opportunity. Uh, and have fun. Make the most of it. This Duke crowd, so into it. You've experienced that when you've been on the court. What's it like cheering on your own brother as he's out there and these fans love him? Um, it's crazy. I'm used to having the Duke jersey on, so to see Trey, um, to see Trey out there in the Duke jersey, um, it's special. I'm excited and I'm very happy for him and uh, looking forward to, to his journey. All right, early thoughts on Zion Williamson and what you've seen from him. Special. He's special. Uh, he can do uh, a little bit of everything out there on the court. Obviously, his athleticism is, is unbelievable, um, but he's a very talented player who's well-rounded. We just showed a picture before we started talking of you and Trey when you cut down the nets after the 2015 National Championship. What do you remember about that night and then also sharing it with your family? Uh, that night is a night I'll never forget. Um, this, that's what you that's what you work hard for, dream for. Uh, I remember like it was yesterday and um, my family is, is very close knit. They're through it all. So that's something that, that we'll cherish and remember forever. All right, thanks so much, Ty. Thank you. Dan. Laura, thank you. Uh, Kentucky trying to make a little run here, and then Cam Reddish with a bucket to kind of stem that. But how about E.J. Montgomery soaring above the crowd? That's his second stick back in the last several plays. And if Kentucky can get this down to under 10 before the half, then I think they can have a very impactful second half. Barrett takes a bump and wow. finishes. Back up to 15. 
Now that is not an easy finish. I mean, Keldon Johnson stayed right with him. He is long and athletic, and Barrett had to make that shot over a, a very good defender. You know, as you have said about a number of players, including Barrett at times, he is just wired to score. He finds a way to put the ball in the basket. Montgomery's doing the same at the other end right now. Boy, what a find by Tyler Hero, and then a great catch and finish by E.J. Montgomery. Jones, and a foul. E.J. Montgomery makes a very good baseline cut here. Even though the action is going to the basket as Marquis Bolden helped up. Montgomery did a great job of cutting in. See how he cuts right there and cuts right behind where Bolden should have been underneath the basket. That was a really smart cut and a great delivery by Tyler Hero. Coming up with the Dodge Halftime Report, we'll check in with Reese Davis, Seth Greenberg, and Jay Williams. Analysis of the first half of this game and a look back at the opening night of college basketball, including Kansas with a win over Michigan State in the first game tonight, and a number of ranked teams picking up wins in their opening game, including North Carolina on the road. They started their season, Jay, on the road at Wofford tonight. Wow, what a finish. Jones with a nice little lob up to Barrett. And R.J. Barrett's got 20 points in the first half of his first collegiate game. Boy, you do something questionable in this game on the offensive end, and Duke's going to make you pay. I mean, a questionable shot by Tyler Hero, and Duke turned it into two points in a hurry. And again, they look to be potentially as lethal in transition as any team in recent memory with guys like Barrett and Williamson able to do what they do. Let's go back to that last play, and let's make it our assist of the game. Brought to you, Mr. Billis, by State Farm. Well, Trey Jones does a really good job of getting the ball to the middle of the floor and just throws it up to R.J. Barrett. I mean, there were three defenders back. That was a two-on-three break, and still able to thread the needle and get the score. But anytime you take a, a bad shot, and I thought that was a, a bad shot by Tyler Hero. You know, bad shot is the first pass in your opponent's fast break. And instead of having an opportunity to cut this to 10 or below, Duke's able to stretch it out. This is a big 51.2 seconds to end this first half. You've seen a lot of both of these teams, both back in August and more recently. Are you surprised by the margin of this game? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Duke has played great. And they're more than capable of playing great. Kentucky has not played well at all. And I, I didn't think Kentucky played particularly well in their two exhibition games. Especially in the second exhibition game. I, di I didn't think they played particularly well. But in this one, they have, they have been dominated in this first half. Duke in transition. There's been very little flow offensively for Kentucky. Reese and the guys getting ready for the halftime report. 47 seconds from now. Barrett driving, lobbing, and the finish for Bolden. That's beautiful. That's that read spot. Marquise Bolden down in the short corner along the baseline. You help up. They are just going to lob the ball to the rim. And that's something we've seen Kentucky do countless times in recent years. It's a staple. That's yep. a staple in basketball now, but Kentucky does it all the time. R.J. Barrett able to turn the corner. Nick Richards has to help up, and right behind him comes Marquise Bolden. That's a very simple play. You just lob that thing up there, and that's just a read. You read the secondary defender, that being... Nick Richards and as soon as he steps in the lane to try to block that shot you just lob it up past him Quade Green at the line for Kentucky and now Reddish will come back in for the final offensive possession of the first half for the Blue Devils some nice minutes for Bolden Keldon Johnson has returned for Kentucky Another rebound for White. Duke's got a chance to get over 60 with a make here in the closing seconds of the half. And I can't think of the last time somebody hung 60 on a Kentucky team. It's a remarkable first half. Barrett for three. 
And it's Kentucky ball with a 1.6 to play. Now, Kentucky looking for a heave to try to cut into the deficit a little bit. One thing you don't want to do is throw this thing out of bounds and let Duke inbound it underneath. Good if it goes. As the first half comes to a close, and what an offensive display put on by the young Blue Devils. Their four freshmen all playing well. And it's 59-42 Duke at halftime here in Indianapolis. When we come back, the Dodge Halftime Report with Reese Davis, Seth Greenberg, Jay Williams. It's coming your way right after these messages. Uh, R.J. Barrett looked like James Harden coming off of pick and rolls and getting to the basket and Euro stepping, getting around people and Zion Williamson, uh, Cam Reddish, you know, Trey Jones did a nice job coming off the bench. You had Jack White making big plays. They got every loose ball. I mean, it was just a dominant performance by Duke in the first half, and I think Kentucky's got to feel a little shell-shocked right now. Even, even when we were coming out to the floor, John Calipari was walking out going, what did you guys, how did you describe that? <laughs> did you see what I saw? And, and just prior to us bumping into Coach Cal, he gave his thoughts to Laura Rutledge. Laura, what did he say? Well, yeah, you guys were witness to some of it, but Coach Cal said he's making lineup changes because he needs the people out there who are going to fight against this Duke team. So, you'll see E.J. Montgomery, you'll see P.J. Washington, you'll see Reed Travis, Ashton Hagens, and of course Keldon Johnson, who's been a bright spot for this Kentucky team in this first half. He said, I just need my guys who are going to go to war, and as they were coming out of the tunnel, Keldon Johnson yelled, it's time to go to war. All right, Laura, thank you. So he, uh, Coach Cal has put out the guys he perceives to be the toughest group that he has. We're ready now for the start of the second half of this Sonic blockbuster. It's really only one player off his starting lineup. He just replaced uh, Tyler Hero with uh, E.J. Montgomery. And Williamson picking up where Duke left off in the first half. Everybody that guards Zion Williamson is stuck with a mismatch. I mean, who's a match for that guy? Lawrence Taylor. <laughs> Here comes Johnson. He provided a good portion of the offense for Kentucky in the first half. Hagen's the miss, and down with the rebound is Reddish. Off the first action. And Kentucky didn't make the Duke defense move at all. Kentucky fans wanted to walk on Williamson. They don't get it. And Reddish will bury a corner three. He is going to get a lot of standstill threes this season. With all of the playmakers that Duke can put on the floor. If you stay wide and you're ready to shoot, it's going to be target practice. Coach Cal wanted to find some toughness. And less than one minute into the second half, he's forced to call a timeout. Here we go. This is an ESPN Sonic blockbuster. Duke and Kentucky in the second game of the Champions Classic. And Cam Reddish, we haven't talked about him as much as we have Williamson and Barrett, but just easy deep range. Well, a couple of standstill threes, put the ball on the deck, got all the way to the rim with his left hand. Very skilled, nice finish off the glass, but he's got 15 points in this game. And Cam Reddish, 6'8". He's got a 7-1 wingspan, perimeter size, multi-dimensional, fluid, smooth. He's got 15. Williamson has 15. Barrett has 20. That's 50 points yeah. among the top three recruits in the nation last year in the ESPN 100. Yeah. And kind of crazy, you could be number three and not get that much hype because number one and number two are playing on the same team as you are. Well, how would you like to be the 10th best recruit in the country in Trey Jones? And we only talked about a little bit. It'll be a tie-up, and the possession arrow will keep it with Kentucky. One thing Kentucky may lack this year is that go-to guy. They've got a bunch of different guys they can go to. But there's not that one guy that can go get you 30. Travis will head to the free throw line. Well, you made the point right off the top of the show that Kentucky's more of a one through nine kind of team, and Duke right now is more of a one through five kind of team. You can really separate Duke a little bit more easily. I don't know if one is more, you know, better than the other, but we're seeing that here tonight. 
Well, tonight, the, the big three has yeah. carried the load. And they've, in fact, the big three is eight points ahead by themselves. Yeah. And Kentucky, obviously, is a better team than they're showing right now. But Duke's had everything to do with that. Good pass, my Good. goodness. Barrett to Reddish, misses the three, and Montgomery down with a rebound for the Cats. Look out. Yep, Reddish picked his pocket. Montgomery never saw. Duke is just toying with Kentucky right now. That was like a quarterback who just locks his eyes in on one receiver, and the safety sees it coming and picks it off for a pick six. Johnson takes a bump and he heads to the free throw line. Well, Cam Reddish just does a great job here of being alert. And Ashton Hagens didn't go back to the ball. It was a bad pass by E.J. Montgomery, turned into a highlight play for Reddish. But right now it has been all Duke and then some. One thing that Kentucky has done is they have gotten to the free throw line. Outside of that, there hasn't been a whole lot to cheer about. Let me ask you, Jay, because Dick was on the first game, what'd you learn about Kansas and Michigan State tonight? Well, Michigan State turned the ball over like crazy, and offensively, they were very inefficient, still almost put up 90 points. I know Tom Izzo has to be very disappointed with the outcome and the way his team played for a good part of the game when they really could have done much better. But Kansas is legit. I mean, what really impressed me more than anything was the poise of their freshman guards. I mean, Devon Dotson was outstanding, and Clinton Grimes was great. I have to give them a, a great feeling going into the season that their freshman guards are up to that challenge. A Duke turnover winds up in a dunk for P.J. Washington. We haven't seen much in transition all game long for Kentucky. That was one of the few opportunities. Friday, it's the seventh annual Armed Forces Classic, one of the cool events on the college basketball calendar, honoring, honoring America's heroes. This year, it's Arkansas and Texas from Fort Bliss Military Base in El Paso, 7 o'clock Eastern Time on ESPN and also streaming live on the ESPN app. Seth Greenberg, Seth Greenberg and Jay Williams are leaving for El Paso Friday. tomorrow morning. Headed down for the Armed Forces Classic. Remember that started back on 11-11-11, on 2011. We were out of the aircraft carrier in San Diego, and it was uh, Michigan State and North Carolina. And the reserves, and Draymond Green, Harrison Barnes. John Henson was on uh, North Carolina. Right, that that tremendous North Carolina team that I thought could have challenged Kentucky in the NCAA tournament, but Kendall Marshall was injured right. in the NCAA tournament, and they were without their point guard, totally changed their team. And if it's Bolden, I think it's his fourth. And it is, so Javon Delorier will come back in. And now, Duke goes more into that five-out offense that you referred to a little bit earlier when they don't have one of their true centers in the game. One thing that Duke, of the many things Duke has done really well in this game, they've made Kentucky into a half-court team. A little gamble right there by Williamson, open things up for the drive. Montgomery comes up with a loose ball and then gets tied up by Deloria. Now give Montgomery credit for the way that he's come out here in the second half. Now he's a good player, and he's, gonna, he's really smooth, and he's going to get even better. Just when he got this ball the second time, couldn't really corral it to go up right away, and Delorier was there to tie it up, and the arrow gives it back to Duke. Jones too strong, and Montgomery rips down the rebound, and a nice outlet to Hero. Johnson, no, too strong off the glass. Well, Kentucky just can't finish. Travis Will. And right now, the Wildcats have to, have to string some stops together. Can't just be trading baskets. Williamson. And again, the crowd wants a walk. They don't get the call, and Williamson finishes. John Calipari just up in arms, talking to one of the officials. Good play there by White, getting back on D to tip it away. 
he leads this game in really important little plays that have been made that aren't so little. R.J. Barrett making big plays, cashing in on another drive. He's just got that sneaky ability to get to the basket whenever he feels like it. Contact doesn't matter. It's Harden-esque. Good rebound and outlet. That's her point guard rebounding and outlet. And here comes Barrett again. And he'll draw the foul. R.J. Barrett just has things that you can't teach. Instinctively feels the defense and is able to go the other way. Not a bad debut for the freshman. And into the free throw line when we come back. ESPN. Zion Williamson, 30, 40 years ago, could break a backboard. I don't think he'd do it now with the breakaway rims and the fact that they break away even from the side rather than just the front. How many backboards will he frighten this year? A ton. <laughs> but all those questions are answerable. Gonzaga is the best team. Wow, out west. What a great steal. I don't think Trey Young was trying to do that, no. but, but it, it was so well. pleasing that he did. Yeah. As they say, that's going to be on SportsCenter. You're going to be saying that a lot with yeah. Zion Williamson. They just thought they just thought to carve out a couple in the top ten every game because he'll fill them. Well, you were talking about as Montgomery misses the baseline jumper. You're talking about the Zags. They've had some turnover this year, and they got an injury right now with Killian Tilly out six or seven more weeks. Didn't seem to bother them scoring no. 120 against yeah. Idaho State, but Gonzaga's legit. They're, they're the best team out west. And they'll be, a, look at that rebound. Are you kidding me? Can just like an offensive rebound be a top 10 play? I, I, if I were the other players, I don't think I'd chest bump him. <laughs> <laughs> I just think you're, I just think you're, you're risking yeah. bodily injury. You're certainly not going to impact him. But that, see, that's, that's not a healthy thing for you to do. Pushing Zion Williamson. <laughs> but when he comes back and chest bumps you, it could require x-rays for you afterwards. Just for fun, you were talking about Gonzaga. Feast Week's not that far away. And out in Maui, it's a loaded field this year. Duke is on one side of the bracket. Gonzaga is on the other side of the bracket. And if those two meet in the final, how great would that be? Nevada's a team. Tell people about Nevada because they don't get as much exposure as the Zags do or a, a top Pac-12 team would. But, man, are they experienced and talented. They're really good. Top 10, good pass. Yeah. Oh, boy. He might have the whole top 10 to himself by the end how of the about night. that pass? Are you kidding me? First, the defensive play by Williamson to get up, block that shot by Nick Richards, takes it the other way. So a runaway train, and then the beautiful bounce pass to R.J. Barrett, who finishes and gets fouled. That's just beautiful basketball. Now, one of the things Coach K talked to us about shoot around today is, I mean, you got two extraordinary talents. You got a lot of great players, but you got two extraordinary talents, but not a hint of selfishness or ego or I want the ball more than this guy's getting the ball. In fact, it's the total opposite how much the core group, and specifically talking about Williamson and Barrett, how happy they are to share the limelight with each other. He, uh, Coach K has used the term secure. Like all the players are very secure. They don't have to be, you know, have all the attention. They don't have to have all the shots. And that includes the quote unquote complimentary players. That there's not jealousy among the, the freshmen coming in getting all of the attention. Uh, and there's not there's not jealousy among the freshmen that each one of them were, you know, big time players coming out of high school, highly rated. Uh, they seem to get along really well together and work really well together without concern over who gets the credit. 
Laura can add more. Yeah, talking to Coach K earlier, and you guys heard some of this as well, but he was really interested to see how these young guys would respond to this atmosphere. He told me, look, are they going to be making freshman mistakes? Or are the lights going to be too big for them? Are they going to be nervous? He said he wasn't totally sure. Obviously, Zion has not been nervous. Jay, when you watch him out there, do you see any semblance of freshmen in any of these guys? I don't. And, you know, Laura, I was... It's so interested to hear Coach K talking about how, you know, there's no jealousy, no ego. And just for you and me, wouldn't it be nice if we could work with someone that didn't have jealousy and ego? And I know you don't, I don't. I don't know, it would be nice. Is this an intervention on, <laughs> on live national television? I was wondering if you're going to get that I was kind of joking oh about yeah, you. No, that, that was like a Zion Williamson freight train like a, of a line there. It's November 6th. That's what concerns me. As Williamson gets a big ovation heading to the bench. Just picked up his third foul. We'll smooth it over. We got time. We have 80 points. There's just under 14 minutes to go in the game in regulation. I don't Chucky. think there's going to be anything more than regulation. <laughs> <laughs> Kentucky trying to slow the, this freight train down by going zone. Which Duke will probably see a lot of this year. They will. But they have so many playmakers that I don't think, uh, I don't think zone is going to be as big of a problem. You, know, you can put, obviously you can put in Alex O'Connell who can shoot it. Cam Reddish can really shoot it. And then you put guy, you can put guys in the middle of the zone. You can move Zion Williamson in there, who can really pass it and make plays. Whoa, what a different player Marquise Bolden is. So on the inbounds play, it was going to be a handoff to the inbounder. He kept it. The defense jumped to the handoff, yeah. and that left a, the baseline wide open for Bolden. They were all so worried about Barrett, they forgot about the guy with the basketball. And honestly, throughout his short career, and, I, and he has had injuries, You've not seen Marquise Bolden make a move that strong. Now watch this, watch this inbound play. It goes to Bolden, and then Barrett is going to come off for the handoff. And Richards is going to shoot to try to guard the handoff, and all of a sudden, gone baseline is Marquise Bolden. It's a well-designed play. You know, and as great as the four freshmen are, if they're going to be the best team they can be, they need help from some of the complimentary players and, and in Bolden a guy like Jack White the way that he's playing tonight they're getting it right now Javin Delorier yeah. even extends further Alex O'Connell Jordan Goldwire all those guys are gonna have to come in and, and play significant minutes and and there's nothing wrong with saying role player complimentary player these guys have to complement the superstar talent that they have out on the floor and there's a lot of star talent there's that middle play, that playmaking ability by R.J. Barrett. He gets it in the middle, doesn't panic, then makes a terrific pass to a standstill jump shooter ready to shoot on the perimeter. And Jack White's now got five points to go along with his eight rebounds tonight. Eight rebounds, some loose balls. He's played really tough on both ends of the floor. Reed Travis called for the travel. Well, we mentioned it's not that far until Feast Week. Duke and Gonzaga among the schools that are out in Maui. And the Battle for Atlantis, always a great tournament as well. You can see a very strong field. Virginia picked up a win on opening night tonight, and they look to be uh, a real contender. And you got to imagine Virginia is going to play, not to overstate this or make it into a cliche or anything, but with a chip on their shoulder after being a number one that lost to a, a 16. They're going to hear about it uh, for a while. and. and I think they've moved on. I, I was yep. just up there about a month ago, and uh, and if those guys are bothered and haven't moved on, they certainly hit it very well for me. And I'll tell you, those guys are funny. Like Kyle Guy's funny, Jack Salt. Those guys are cracking me up. I, I asked, you know, Jack Salt's from New Zealand, and I asked him, can you do an American accent? And he said, well, of course I can. And then he says, I would like to buy a cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Hilden Johnson to the line as Alex O'Connell checks back in and Baird will get a breather here with 12.22 to go. And he gets a nice ovation as well. He and Williamson both on the bench right now. This is one of those games, Dan, where you can't imagine that, that a, a preferred walk-on expects to get in this game. 
And absent something crazy happening with Kentucky making a run here, they may get in the game. Yeah. I mean, we may be seeing the walk-ons at the end of this thing. Okay. Who would have thought that coming in? No, not at all. And it's really been this way for much of the night. Duke came out of the gate quickly and a little spurt here and there by Kentucky in the first half. All Duke in the second half. Reddish has a nice pace about him with the basketball, doesn't he? And a great feed to O'Connell, who shot 49% from beyond the arc last season as a freshman. Well, the ball moves with this group. And it went from side to side, baseline drive, baseline drift. Behind the back, Jones. Extra pass from White. O'Connell again. They're just toying with him. I mean, how impressive has this been? Well, Tyus Jones may be able to fire, fire up Jimmy Butler's plane and get back early. <laughs> Tipped back out by Travis. And the lob over the top. Hero to Washington. And now Red is trying to go one on four. Had it knocked away. It's kind of a street ball game right now, isn't it? Well, that's one thing. You don't want to see it get a little sloppy, yeah. so... You know, Coach K telling his team to slow down a little bit. Did you notice he said yo right there? <laughs> <laughs> yo, slow down. Yo. yo. <laughs> 11 02 to go. Maybe another yo or two as we go all access with Duke when we come back. Only available on ESPN Plus. Earn Everything is an eight part all access series on Duke basketball. Your chance to follow. Coach K, Zion Williamson, R.J. Barrett, and the rest of the team for their first time together in July through their trip to Canada in August and through tonight's season opener. The first six episodes available now on ESPN Plus via the ESPN app. The final two episodes premiere this weekend. I've seen the first six, and it's, it's really good. It's kind of like rolling with the tide that was so awesome on ESPN Plus so that chronicled Alabama football. Jones with a fadeaway not there and down with a rebound is Hero. 91 points for Duke with better than 10 minutes to go still. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. And Kentucky in this ballgame, Kentucky's only at six points in transition. Duke 25. Duke has scored 46 points in the paint. They've scored 18 points off of 11 Kentucky turnovers. And Duke has coughed the ball up four times wow. total. Four turnovers, 18 assists. That's a pretty good assist to turnover ratio against a long and athletic defensive team. The most points Jay scored in a Champions Classic game, and this is year eight of the event, is 94 by Kansas versus Duke back in 2013. And as Trey Jones goes limping off to the bench. It's about the only concern that Duke has had tonight. Doesn't look good. His big brother looks on. Trying to just bang knees there, trying to get around Travis. Who knocks down a three. Well, Travis has really, he and Keldon Johnson have been the only offense at all for Kentucky. It's just been an, an uphill slog. And part of it, part of the reason that Kentucky can't get out of transition is they've been taking the ball out of the net all night. White again. He is everywhere on the glass right now. Yeah, this is his best game. He, he played great last year against Notre Dame. He had eight rebounds in that one. And I think that was his ninth rebound. Past the midway point of the second half and a 32-point margin. Trey Jones just kind of straightening out and bending that knee a little bit on the bench. Appears to be all right, not getting any medical attention right now. Uh, Duke taking some time off the clock before they attack. I mean, how do you stop that? They're just so powerful going to the basket. And he tries to get to that left hand, his dominant hand. You know, one of the things you were talking about, the Virginia kids and how funny they are. One of the things when you talk to Zion Williamson, he is fun. I mean, he just loves playing basketball, loves being part of a team. And 
just always appears to be in a good mood when he's on the court. But even if he wasn't funny, I'd laugh anyway, just out of fear. <laughs> it's an excellent point. And he's constantly in motion. Even when he's standing at the free throw line, as you see, he's kind of shifting his weight back and forth. You know, I know people when when they hear you've never I've never seen anyone like Zion Williams on a basketball card is thinking that come on man LeBron was better or Kobe was better in high school that's true like LeBron's a better was, was a better prospect in high school but he wasn't like this he was he didn't have this kind of size combination of size length incredible athleticism and and those nimble feet I mean, maybe it's a it's a distinction without a difference to some people, but 285 with a 45 inch vertical, and you you can see it out there. Yeah. You just, I think Coach K was even asked like, how do you describe Zion? And he said, just watch. You know, he basically said, I can't, just yeah. watch. Yeah. So there's nobody to compare him to. Yeah. It's like, there, there's no comp. Very efficient. Rebounding, handling the ball, and finishing again. Man, oh man. Like I said, just watch. Yeah. How do you describe that? I mean, how quick was that crossover to his right hand? Crossover, and yeah, he dunks it with his right hand. And I mean, every game he does that multiple times. And I know they, you know, they talk about positionless basketball. He's the de facto point guard right now with Jones on the bench. He's bringing the ball up. He's initiating the offense. Well, because especially because he's being guarded by a big guy. So he's bringing it up and, and taking it against Reed Travis. And now R.J. Barrett takes it against Ashton Hagens. And numbers now for Kentucky. Hero. Nice English off the glass. Boy, Tyler Hero is a good player. And he's going to get better and better. And he can shoot it, but that's not all he can do. He's not just a shooter. Reddish stripped. But even after the strip, Kentucky's not really able to get anything right away in transition. Well, talk to me a little bit about Hagen's and quickly. We haven't seen very much of quickly at all tonight. We haven't said Hagen's name all that much since the opening minutes of the game. Well, we talked a little bit. Hagen's reclassed, kind of like Marvin Bagley did last year at Duke and Joey Baker did this year. So, arguably, should still be in high school. Man, what a tough kid he is. Yeah. A lot of talent on this Kentucky team, but right now they are getting it handed to them here in Indy. Zion Williamson doing it again. He lives above the rim. Just a human highlight. If there was any doubt as to what the number one freshman class in the country is, all that doubt has been erased through this basketball game in the Champions Classic. Zion Williamson, 26 points, 10 of 12 from the field. Cam Reddish. 19 points, three of seven from three, has not missed a free throw. And then R.J. Barrett, the left-hander from Mississauga, Ontario. 25 points, five assists. On this stat sheet, Dan, that, that we get here, there's plus minus. Listen to this plus minus. Zion Williamson, plus 27. R.J. Barrett, plus 28. Marquise Bolden plus 24 Trey Jones plus 31 Jack White plus 28 Now listen to Kentucky's Travis Reed or Reed Travis excuse me minus 18 PJ Washington minus 20 Tyler Hero minus 22 the entire team has minus after them. You, you have to add a plus three now to all the, uh, the Duke players on the floor Barrett knocks it down The numbers don't lie in this one Duke's at a hundred points with seven and a half minutes to go Duke going to a 2-3 zone. This will just help take a little more time off the clock. And get toward triple zeros a little bit faster. So you're going to see Duke now burn clock and then attack the last you know, 16 seconds or so of the shot clock. They're not taking the air out of it. They just don't want to be in a hurry. Wow. 
I mean, he can get where he wants to get because if he doesn't go through you, he's going to go over you. How do you stop it? You can have a, all the game plans you want. But what, how are you going to get in front of him to knock that ball away? And then you stay behind him. He's going to shoot over you, go through you. Keldon Johnson with a three. I really like him. He is a two-way player. That is a consistent shooter. He's tough, aggressive. And he's the best pro prospect, I believe, on this Kentucky team. And they've got some pro prospects. He's got 23. Travis has 22. Nobody else is in double figures right now for Kentucky. I don't know if that was a lob up for Delorier or, or a shot taken by Barrett. Either way, it's Kentucky ball. Look at Johnson going. And look at Delorier with a block. And Barrett is fouled. Well, there will be a lot to talk about on Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt tonight. Look back, of course, at the Champions Classic. Kansas is win over Michigan State. Duke on its way to a win over Kentucky also breaking down the latest rankings for the college football playoff and one big thing is Les Miles a good fit for Kansas SVP coming at you and I believe Mr. Billis will be on the show if I'm not mistaken well that means ratings will go through the roof Absolutely. but I'll, I'll tell you what would be interesting with Les Miles at Kansas I'm not sure he's tasted the Kansas grass it is delicious how about the uh, the shrimp cocktail you had last night? That is such a, a delicacy here at St. Elmo's. I did not have that. Oh. I watched Jay Williams eat it, and then watched him begin sweating profusely, <laughs> and in fact have to take a knee at dinner last right. night. And being the friend that you are, you put the picture on Twitter. I put the picture yes. on Twitter. I, you know, I didn't see you rushing to his aid either. No, I was like three seats away. Yeah, Jimmy Jimmy Butler loans Tyus Jones is playing. I can't even get you to get me an Uber. <laughs> Deep three there by Hero. Now lessons to be learned by the Wildcats who, you know, and Kentucky fans, I mean, they are as passionate as any fan base in the country, obviously, and this one's going to leave a mark, but there's a lot of talent and a lot of time and a lot of upside for this group this season this is game one nothing more than that no they'll be fine but it does remind you a little bit even though the teams are very very different of what Kentucky did to Kansas in 2014 15 in this event look at that move it just he, he is very hardened-esque in his ability to get to the basket his dad, a terrific player, Rowan Baird, who's here tonight, played at St. John's, played professionally overseas, and R.J. Barrett is the godson of Steve Nash, Canada's greatest ever player. And Steve Nash and Rowan Barrett run the Canadian national team, the Canadian program, and obviously R.J. Barrett is going to be, is already, and it will continue to be a huge part of that program going forward. R.J. Barrett has tremendous ability. And Coach K has called him advanced. He's got really good vision. He is beyond his years as a player. And just has a, a knack for scoring. Godfather is Steve Nash. You know who my godfather is? I don't. Uh, Frank Loro. You don't seem impressed. No, it's not It's it's not on your bio blast. It's not. <laughs> I don't have a bio blast. No, I don't do that for, yeah. I don't do that for players of my low caliber. <laughs> We're told that we'll have it for the next game. By the time we get to Chapel Hill for the next game we're doing on Monday, you'll have a bio blast. How about Chapel Hill, uh, North Carolina, going on the road yeah. to Wofford? And R.J. Barrett may be done for the night. And if he is, he'll sit down with 33 points in his collegiate debut. And that is not the last 30-point effort he's going to put up. He just scores with such ease. Quickly back into the game for Kentucky. Hero elevates for the 15-footer and knocks it down. He's into double figures. Well, even though you know, Duke played a lot of zone last year, it was, it's, was a necessity for them to win. They haven't played any that I've seen this year in any of their, you know, sort of the exhibitions we were at any, in any meaningful minutes. But they could be a good zone team, too, if they want to because of their athleticism and length. The ball movement has been really impressive tonight as well. Really impressive. The ball doesn't stick. I mean, they, they're a willing passing team, and nobody 
is looking to necessarily take it on their own. Montgomery and White battling for the rebound, and it winds up with Duke. Less than four minutes to go. You know, what's interesting, Dan, about your point about them moving the ball is that you know, all these guys are aggressive looking to score, and there's nothing selfish about that. It's selfish to take bad shots, but this is a willing passing team. If they're open, they'll take it. If not, they'll give it to somebody who's got something better. That's a, a nice way to play. Especially for guys who are all used to being the alpha male on every team they've been on before this one. Yes. That's a good way to put it. 3.37 to go. In control the entire night in the freshman class as advertised and then some for the Blue Devils so far tonight. The freshman quartet have combined for 86 of the points for Duke team. Jordan Goldwire into the ball game for Duke number 14. And you'll recall, Dan, when we were in Canada covering Duke's trip, there was a story inaccurately reported about Jordan Goldwire that he was afraid of roller coasters. Right. And he was able to uh, straighten us out on that, that he is not afraid of roller coasters. <laughs> he would just prefer not right. to be on one. He's just opposed to them, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. I'm sure SVP will cover that in great detail tonight on SportsCenter as well. Goldwire getting a chance as Bold Bolden goes out. Really nice performance. Yep. Really nice performance by Marquise Bolden. And, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if Coach K early in his postgame comments, and he'll talk about Baird and Williamson, wouldn't surprise me at all if in the first sentence or two he brought up what Marquise Bolden and Jack White did in this game. No tonight. question. But both were very influential in setting a tone of, of toughness and going after the ball and being physical. Double-figure rebounds for White tonight. Yeah, this will be more of a, a fun film session than, than normal. On one side. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yes. I mean, yeah. But on the other, you might, I mean, you know, there's an argument that we throw the film out. I don't think John Calipari or Perry will do that. I think Kentucky will watch this film. They'll break down all their mistakes, and they'll face it head on. They've got Southern Illinois, the Wildcats do, three days from now. And they got some interesting games in the non-conference part of the season. In December, they'll play Seton Hall, Utah, North Carolina, Louisville, and the SEC is going to be a, a bear this year. A lot of good teams in the SEC. Well, Tennessee uh, returns just about everybody. And Admiral Schofield has improved. He's, uh, that's Alex O'Connell's spot. Yeah, he can shoot it. He can shoot it. He's working on, like, his 12th hairstyle <laughs> in two years. Yeah. And I say that with a ton of jealousy. Yeah. Because you and I are kind of locked in on what we're working with. Right I've now. just, no, I've made a, I've made a decision. I'm not locked into it. <laughs> just made a, yeah. I'm sticking with my decision. I'm decisive. No, you're kind of locked in. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to be the one to break this to you, but your options are limited. About the same as mine. Well, Kentucky down by 34 points right now. As we take a look at the most lopsided defeats they have suffered under John Calipari. And this has a chance to be number one the way things are going. Justin Robinson is into the game now for Duke. We saw the Admiral here earlier. David Robinson's son has checked in. Former walk-on now on scholarship. And a guy who got a little bit of run last year can, can knock down a shot as David looks on. In the summertime, the Admiral trained with his son. I think Javin Delorier was the other player. They went to San Antonio and worked on, among other things, kickboxing as a proud papa. So you can be in the Hall of Fame, and you're still a proud papa. So he's taking pictures of Justin out there. How about Jack White? Yeah, just a terrific game from Jack White. Really improved his shooting. He's so, so much more confident. Just knows how to play. Hero, deep three. And knocked out of bounds by O'Connell. Should stay with Kentucky, and it does. How would you like to be kickboxing with David Robinson? I don't want to be kickboxing with anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly steps into a three. A little bit too strong. And the loose ball down to O'Connell. 
with a minute 40 to go in a performance that on this opening night of the college basketball season it will be top of mind for every college basketball fan this will be what they're talking about tomorrow morning well I think Duke made a very strong statement that this is a team that can beat absolutely anybody this isn't putting up 116 points on a Division two or Division three exhibition game opponent. This is a top five Kentucky team with the number two recruiting class in the country. Reed Travis, who transferred in from Stanford two times, all Pac-12. And then three other guys that came back from a, an NCAA tournament team last year and played significant roles. And were never really in the game. Never in the game. Never in the game. Brankovich. Now Robinson on the drive, knocked away, and it stays with Duke, 12 on the shot clock. One thing that, of the many things I didn't anticipate tonight, Dan, was so many people hitting the exits with like eight minutes to go in, yeah. in regulation. Yeah, it, was, it was stunning. Yeah, Duke Blue is still here. Kentucky Blue looks like they have headed home. I mean, this place was electric and packed. And I don't think I've come across a stunned crowd like this in a lot of years. Well, a lot of coaches sometimes can try to turn something like this into a positive. You're, you'll sure have the kids' attention at practice tomorrow, won't you? Well, and it is going to be addressed straightforwardly. I, John Calipari is not going to sugarcoat this at all. What did Duke have at halftime? 59, right? 59 points at halftime, and they put up 57 here in the second half. This has been, as now Ron Gruber, one of the officials, tells Nick Richards and Antonio Brankovich to cool it. It's not like it was just one segment of the game or one extraordinary seven or eight minute run. This is the way it's been for 40 minutes. No, Duke won every facet of this game. Every single one. But White hasn't stopped moving from the moment he entered the game. Look at that. There's another example. Tenth rebound. Wow. Now you can basically run the clock. An incredibly impressive performance in this battle of preseason top five ranked teams. Frankovich with the up and under. And that's the cherry on the Sunday for Duke tonight. A 34 point margin, the most lopsided defeat suffered by Kentucky in the John Calipari era. 118 84. Unbelievable. Just an incredible performance by a team full of young superstars and some role players that have really stepped forward. Who, who would have thunk it? Yeah. Amazing. They don't make freshmen like they used to. Huh? Was Barrett with 33, Williamson with 28, Reddish with 22. Trey Jones, six points, seven assists, four rebounds in each of their collegiate debuts against a very good Kentucky team. And they got some things to work on in Lexington, but Duke has made everybody in the college basketball world take notice here on night one of the season with an unbelievably impressive performance. One eighteen eighty four the four freshmen combining for eighty nine points for the Blue Devils as they win it going away. And all smiles for the Duke Blue Devils and not so much for the guys on the other side. Zion Williamson is with Laura Rutledge. All right, thank you, Dan. Zion, one of the things that Coach K was talking about earlier is just your joy for the game of basketball. You can barely wipe the smile off your face. What was your collegiate debut like for you? I think it was great. Uh, all, of, all of us have fun. And 
I can't even explain it. I just love playing basketball. I love playing with my brothers and playing for Coach K and those coaches. I don't think it's nothing better than that. Lots of dunks from you tonight. Lots of opportunities I could pick. But I'm going to show you this one right here on my phone and get your take. Okay, you ready? What do you think? I love it. I love the hustle from Jack on that play. And, you know, he rewarded me, he rewarded me with it. What does this feel like when you are dunking on the basket like this? I love it because it's just an energy booster for me and my teammates, and it gets them going on defense. What do you think this team showed tonight dominating from start to finish a very talented Kentucky team? I feel like we just play hard. Um, Kentucky is a very good team. Uh, now we just got to keep playing like that for the rest of the season. All right. Thanks, Zion. Thank you. Well, you can see he has fun, and how could you not? A great smile from Zion Williamson, a great talent, and a great performance by he and the rest of the Blue Devils. They win by 34. For Jay Billis and Laura Rutledge, I'm Dan Schulman. Thanks for watching the Champions Classic. Here is SVP.